we never give money to government, right? We will never give money to government. That is not the model of Shaggy and Friends. Point blank. That from long time and tell me don't do that. So that, that conversation should be thrown out. We never give money to government, right? We will never give money to government. That is not the model of Shaggy and Friends. Point blank. Now, as far as how we spend it, we have to choose the right way with our team and say how we spend it that we get the best, the most out of our book. And that is what we're doing. So let me ask you this. What's the future of Shaggy and Friends Child Concerts going forward? As far as a concert, I remember now, it says Shaggy and Friends. It, it was never me alone. I have, a, I, have a, I have tons of people that, that, are, that are involved in the friends of Shaggy and Friends. When there becomes an attack on Shaggy, it's an attack on the friends. So at the end of the day, I can, even if I have a change out and say, yeah, I want to do it, I still have to convince these people to come on board with me, right? And in conversations with them, that's a harder sell at this point, you know? So I, I can't say that it, is, it won't happen, but I can tell you, it, it, you know, at this time, there, are, there is no plans for that. Um, but a lot of people don't know that there was a lot of meetings was going on. We started with um, Dr. James, um, who was the, SO, it was the uh, SMO. And, um, and we started that from about a year and a half ago, where we had conversations about what to do with the funds. Now, remember now, they said four years, but we've been sitting in a pandemic for two. You know what I mean? So we started afterwards and trying to figure out how best to do it. First, they came with a situation that says <clears throat> they were going to just furnish five beds. And then there was another situation when COVID had happened them want us to help to build a ward. We couldn't do that because of the um, Charities Act of Jamaica, which says that whatever we earmark the money for, whatever it is that we raise the money for, that's where we have to spend the money. Mm. So bottom line, if you tell, if you tell a man, say, you know what? We're going to raise the money and we're going to buy a chair. You can't go buy a bed. Yeah. <laughs> right? According to the Charities Act, it's illegal. So we have to buy um, what is what you say, um, related to the IC. Now, my big dream was to build a brand new IC. Um, that became a little bit difficult when we realized that the hospital is on JDF land. So we don't have enough space. We don't have land. And um, we realized there were a lot more obstacles to try and get land and get all these approvals to build a brand new IC. So we came to a different idea, um, which was Rebecca and you know, Dr. James and uh, you know, Mr. Woods and all of us. Come with an idea and said, why don't we um, upgrade the existing IC? So the existing IC right now have five beds for the whole country. We also found another situation where there were two isolation rooms that are not in use anymore. They might use them for storage now. So we found spaces, then with our architect, we came in with our architect and he's looking at the surroundings and how we can expand the current building, right? To facilitate a seven bed um, you know, facility, to create a seven, make it a seven bed facility. And enough room for like, you know, storage and offices and stuff like that to work for, to make the ICU be state of the art. And that is what um, this whole vibe has been from meetings after meetings after meetings. Now, in fairness, um, the chairman came into uh, knowledge of this um, probably a little later. So we had preliminary meetings from before and he wasn't aware of it until afterwards. Um, you know, I, I, I don't talk to the chairman normally, so it, it, was, it was the hospital that really kind of put, keep him on that. And, um, you know, uh, as far as the minister, I have not had a conversation with the minister at all. So, you know, there it goes. But we literally have all the plans that we, we have going there and we're basically full steam, steam ahead and we want to make it happen. People to, to approve those things. And I want, before it reaches them, and somebody start Mark and say, well, boy, I want the best set of people involved that can 
execute it properly, make the plans as, as, as um, professional as possible, right? That way I have no problem. If you touch my blood clock, you're being a problem. There were pop festivals, and the rest of them was just my individual shows, you know, which me and my fans did. Two of the festivals were reggae. One of those reggae festivals, and to be honest with you, those two reggae festivals are the two lowest paid out of all of them, and gave me the most problem as far as production and as far as everything. And it just got to be at a point where we have a reggae fraternity, and it's a fraternity that is, as you would say, it's 5% of the market share. So it doesn't give you much leverage. And so you have a lot of these big festivals that will take certain advantage of things. They might go all the artists, they might tell the artists they can't do this, they might give them some little leader, hotel room, they might this, they might that, all kind of things. And most of the Jamaica artists, they might just take it because there isn't much other game in town. But for me, there's a lot of game. I don't have to take it, right? If I don't go back on that festival for the rest of my life, it's not gonna affect my pocket. So that gives me a certain amount of power and leverage to speak my mind on the injustice when me see, see on behalf of my people. Eh? And what, what, what exactly was the injustice? There were a lot of things that were going on. First of all, you can't have a legend like Toots, a player, you have, fi you have, you have like a fireworks in the middle of the mountain. That's just one that did happen from before. You can't have me a clothes when me are one of the biggest things to make that even exist. And then you have come cut my set and the same people walk on by my stage. That no work and come plug out. That can't work. When me see other artists who so have a play and them, them don't have a problem with it. Remember, I've only done that festival twice in my whole life. Some people do it four, five, and six times. And I ended up doing it this time, you know, because you want to do as much of these reggae festivals and try to create the things, but I, I don't have to do all of it. You know, so that's just one of them things that we're, we're just happening on that. Yeah, you gotta hear my mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. When I go, when I go hold my mouth, and right. I can afford not to hold my mouth. Right. <laughs> I